Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at functions that returns channel. And that sounds a little confusing. Just remember that channels are like any other data type, just like a map, just like an array, just like a Boolean. So it's just a type of container type in a way, right? Because you can put things in a channel just like you can put things in a map or an array, right? But they're different. And so because it's a built-in type into uh, in Golang, you can treat it like any other built-in type, which means that oh, not only can you pass it to a function like we've done already, like in our producer and consumer, we pass channels to them, but we can have a channel return, uh, if, sorry, a function return a channel value, just like if we could have a function return an array or a slice or something. But before we do that, um, and of course we're going to talk about that and then see an example. And don't worry, our example is basically going to be, if you imagine that right now what we've done is we create a channel pass it to the producer and say, hey, produce on this channel. What we write ideally like is to call a producer function and have it return the channel on which it's going to send values or it's going to provide the values. This will give us a nice setup for when we get into Go Routine to see some very nice construct that you can do with channels in Go Routine. But of course, we're not going to really do that, but we're going to kind of use this as a setup. But before we get into that, it's good for us to kind of remind ourselves or at least get very comfortable without this less than dash um, operator um, works when you type with channels. And so if you remember, when you use chan, like I have here, and what comes afterward is the type. Now, in this example, what am I saying? I'm saying if, you, if we go back to here, when we put this less than dash on the right side of the chan keyword, we're saying, this channel, you can only send values of type T. When you put less than dash on the left side of the chan keyword, we're saying you can only receive values of type T. So then it makes sense then that since this is on the right side, we're saying we can only, this channel can only, you can only send on it values of this type. And since channel itself is also built into to go laying, it could have been just, oh, we're sending ints. No, no, we're actually the values we're going to send. Every value we push on that channel, on this channel, is going to be a channel of int. So you could imagine that there's a function that is producing um, values of channel of ints, and maybe one channel of int it provides only gives you zeros. Another channel of int only gives you one. Another channel of int gives you twos or something, right? So every value on this channel is a channel that you can read and send int on, okay? What about this one? Again, this less than dash is on the right side of the channel, so it means that though you can only do send in on whatever this channel here is, but what can you send? You can send channel that you can only read ints from. And you can see this here by this less than dash being on the left side of this channel, um, keyword, it means that we can only read from this channel. And what are we reading? We're reading ints. Hopefully that makes sense. Once you study this and look at it a little bit and just kind of go back to what we've done already here, just combine this knowledge and you will kind of, you're going to get it. The third one here is saying, look, I can only receive on this channel that I'm defining. And what kind of, what values am I going to receive every time I try to read from this channel? I'm going to receive values of channel ints, but I can only read from those channels that I get. Okay? And so this would be a way for you to create a channel on which you send other channels that a person can read from. Uh, I know this kind of doesn't make a lot of sense now since we're not really doing anything yet. We're not seeing examples of it, but we will in the next video or two. Okay? Um, and right in this next, today's video, you're going to see this too. And then the last one here is we have a channel. And since we don't see any less than or dash um, on the left side or the right side of it, uh, we know it's a channel we could send and receive on. But look at this parentheses. This parentheses says, well, this is a channel which I can send or receive channels that I can only receive int on. Does that sound like a whole lot? But why the parentheses? Well, we need the parentheses because if you take those parentheses out, it would four and one would look the same except for the fact that oh, there's a space between here but space doesn't mean anything when we talk about the associativity of less than dash we said oh it's associates to the leftmost channel 
which means if you didn't have this parentheses here, um, this less than dash is going to try to associate with the leftmost channel, which is going to give you back this, this, the same declaration. That's why in this declaration, you didn't have to be explicit about putting the parentheses around here to set out this channel. I can only send on this channel channels of int because this associates to this one. So it means that oh, this is a descending channel only. But here, we don't want that. We want a channel on which you can receive only channels of int. So we put a parentheses around this part. We didn't have to do it here because there's already one that's associated with this. And we didn't have to worry about here because having one on the left side and one on the right side is not a thing, all right? So there's no confusion. There's no ambiguity there. Uh, so here, to disambiguate what you really mean, you put the parentheses around, okay? Does that make sense? And then if you really want this to be a channel that you only can send values of channels on which you can only receive in, well, then you can put a less than dash here and you don't need to put a parentheses if you stick it in between here because it would associate to this channel. Does that make sense? Just look at what it says. Left that less than dash associates to the leftmost channel. All right. All right. So I think you still got to review this a few times before you get it. But trust me, once you kind of get this in your head just remember this and then remember that oh less than dash associates to the leftmost channel keyword then uh, i think you'll be fine that's the trick i use in terms of um, understanding it all right so now let's jump to our code okay so i'm going to save this and i'm going to go here and as you can see i'm just in the channel 7 directory and i do copy minus r to start out from exactly where we left off in the previous video and then I'm going to change to that directory and I'm going to do code that okay and so this should give us exactly where we left off yesterday and so if you remember what we were doing we were creating a channel pass it to a consumer producer to produce some value on it then also after the producer produce some value pass the consumer to consume some value from it and so here what are we looking at we're looking at function returning channels right okay Returning channels, okay, or channel values, okay. Uh, yeah, let's see the channels because it could be more than one channel too, but well, it doesn't matter. So, here's what I'm saying why don't we have so here we have this producer that we pass a channel to, and then it puts some stuff on it and close it. Why don't we have the producer just make the channel itself? Why don't we have the producer make the channel? And if it's making a channel, it doesn't need to accept it as a parameter, but it sure should return a channel, right? So um, let's make it return a channel. And so we're going to put it out here. But what kind of channel is that is going to return? It can return a channel on which you're going to send in values to. It has to return a channel that you can only read values from. You can remember, it's going to close the channel anyway. So you couldn't send on it anyway. So let's return a channel called out. And so we're going to select these guys. Use the, and I'm going to max. I'm going to use ultimate key to select these guys. And um, I'm going to call this out. Okay. So producer makes a channel called out. And um, doesn't matter what this. And it puts some values on it. Closes it and then return it, okay? It returns that channel that it, it created and wrote some values on. So it's the responsibility of the producer to produce the channel on which it, it wrote the value. It wrote the value. So if that is the case, then we have C colon equals here instead, right? Because our producer doesn't accept a channel. It returns a channel. Once we call it, it produce, creates a channel, puts some value, and it tells us, hey, get the values from this channel that I've, I've returned. And then now we can pass that to our C because of course since our producer has returned a channel on which you can only read int from our consumer expects that kind of channel from which you can only re um, read int from so our stuff should work so go run main and it works just as before so does that make sense seeing a producer that returns a channel from which you can only um, um, the producer is returning uh, a function that returns a channel and it says what kind of channel is returning no, you can extend our consumer, and instead of making a consumer, make it like a processor instead, right? 
something that just processes values. So we call it, let's call it compute. Let's call it processor. Processor. And processor takes a channel and returns, you know, of course, another channel, right? Because it takes like an input, do something to it, and returns the result. And so, if that's the case, we're going to be printing out our results out here, okay? And inside the channel, it's going to accept a channel, let's call it in, and then it's going to return another channel, all right? And looking at this, we can copy this and we can paste it in here. But, you know, it is not doing as simple as just putting values on there. What it's doing, it's looping over whatever it get, the inputs it gets and writing, um, you know, some values on there. Um, it's not printing it out. It's, you know, looping over and it's saying, on my out channel, I'm going to send um, V times, you know, I don't know, 2 plus or, you know, minus 7 or something. It does some computation, right? And so it loops over input and does this make sense? So producer creates a channel, returns it. We pass producer. We pass that channel to the processor, who reads it. Processor takes this this channel's input, loops over it, and every value it finds, it multiply by two and then subtract seven, and then it writes it to some channel called out. That out channel is a channel it made. Okay. Now let's ignore for the fact that we have some code here that's not very scalable because this guy has a buffer of 10 and maybe one of them can change his size. We see how to fix things like that later on. So for now, we're doing it like the not so efficient way, but just trying to show you some of the capabilities that we have, right? And with channels being built in and being like, you know, built in types, how you can pass them to function and return them from functions. And what does that kind of control does that give you? And so here we're returning this channel. So let's see, um, why is our thing says no new variable oh yeah no new variable created so we we just do equal like that okay and so now if we run our code we should see this okay so let's say that this guy was producing just zero one two and let's create some more values you know four eight sixteen Okay, and let's wait for that to save, and then we run it. Okay, and now we can see that um, thing. Now, the advantage of what we've just done is that we can push our stuff through another processor, right? Again, because if we take the output of this processor, send it to the input of this, another process function, get the output of that, as you can see how we can easily scale this up now. Okay, and all I can do is keep duplicating this. Well, there's no reason for me to just have one process, I could call this process one, and I can call this process two. And now I just write another process function, I call this process one, this is process two, and process one would do this, and let me just comment out these guys. Uh, let me comment out the whole reading and writing to channel thing. Okay, actually we can just take them out completely unless you want to print out some information about what is it that we're actually doing. But anyway, we can decide if we want to do that. So this is doing process one, we're not going to change. Process two is doing, you know, the value minus, you know, five plus a hundred, for example. And now if we run that, right, this is what we get. So we have one producer producing these values zero to 16 pushing it into a channel, the other processor reads those value off of that channel, does some computation, writes it out to another channel which it created, returns that, and we take that pass that into another produce processor, which, you know, does some computation and returns another channel. And we can see this scaling out, you know, you can just keep adding things and it would work the same way. 
So hopefully this is a simple contrived example showing you the capability and potential power um, you can derive from having being able to return channels from functions. Okay? All right. I know this is a lot. The course is getting a little heavy now. Um, so these things are really probably stretching your imagination a little bit, like the channels and how they're working and the fact they can return them from a, a function and just pass them through, you know, probably a little bit. So just think of it as like an array almost and that we created here and we return a slice, for example, worked on it, created another slice with the result and we pass it through. So kind of think of it that way. But of course, our channels are much more flexible than array. Okay. All right. And of course, again, I'm going to keep repeating this. This sets us up for running go routine or concurrent functions. All right. Take care. I don't want to make this too long. Um, see you in the next video. Practice. Leave comments. Um, subscribe. Spread the word. Thank you very much for everything you're doing. And see you later. Bye.